Hello and welcome to Program It Yourself in Java. My name is Chris and in this episode we will be talking about methods. In the last tutorial we finished our prototype for the calculator. If you want to keep that code but still follow along with a fresh project you can just go over to your package explorer and create a new project. So far we have gained a rough idea of how to use methods but we've never really seen the insides of one. The only real method we have dealt with is the main method right here. Today we are going to learn how to write and use our own methods. They allow us to divide our program into smaller sub-programs. This is useful because then we can take one complicated task and break it into easy to manage chunks. I am going to start with a trivial demonstration to show you the concept. Imagine that we have a welcome message that opens up whenever the user opens our program. Usually we would do it like this. And here is how we would place this task inside of a method. Inside of our main class we define our method. What we need to specify when we create a new method is its return type. In this case I chose the return type void. Void means that this method won't return a value. I'll go over this in more detail later. After we've chosen the return type we need to specify the name. I called this method print welcome because that's a pretty accurate description of what it's gonna do. The name is then followed by these parentheses. These denote the so-called argument list of the method. We will leave it empty for now and deal with it later. And just like our main method, we have our curly braces to denote its scope. So now we can move this statement right here into our method. And accessing it is as simple as just calling the method's name. However, there's one more thing we need to do first. See how our main method is static? If we want to use our newly created method from within that main method, we have to make it static as well, otherwise we would get an error. I won't be telling you what the static keyword is about just yet. There will be a more appropriate time for that. Anyway, let's go ahead and call our method. And if I run this, we get our welcome user. Now this was fairly simple, so let's try a more complicated example. Let's make a method that takes two numbers and adds them together and then prints the result. Here I created a new method and called it add because this method is going to take two numbers and add them together. Like before, its return type is void. This time, however, we are making use of the argument list. Here I specified two external values that I want this method to use. The first argument is an integer called number 1 and my second argument is an integer called number 2. I separated these two arguments by using a comma. We will be able to use these two arguments within our method. And of course, there's nothing stopping us from creating our own variables within this method as well. So just like within the main method, we can create our own variables. This concept is nothing new to you guys. I created a variable of the type integer and called it result. And into that variable I stored the value of number 1 plus number 2. So now let's go ahead and print it out. Let's see this method in action. We go back to the main method and call the method that we just created. This time however we are getting an error. The method add integer integer in the type main is not applicable for the arguments nothing. This means that we didn't specify the correct arguments. Up here in the argument list of the method we said that it takes in two integers. 
So whenever we call this method, we have to provide two integer values. So let's go with 5 and 7. And the error is gone. If we run this program now, we will get our 12. Because 5 plus 7 is indeed 12. Do you understand what's happening here? Let's try again with different numbers. And we get 34. Whichever values we place in the argument list right here, get transported in this list right here. So now in this case, number 1 equals 21 and number 2 equals 13. The order in which you put the values is very important. Of course, we could also use variables as our arguments. So now I can put in a and b because they are both integers. So now number 1 equals a and number 2 equals b. Here's our 15. Let me go over this one more time because I know for a lot of people this is a difficult concept to understand. When we define a method we can use a parameter list filled with values that we want to use in the method. It's similar to a simple variable declaration. We just haven't assigned a value to it yet. Whichever values we specify when calling this method get assigned to those variables. And the order of those arguments is followed strictly. Now I suggest that you play around with this until you've really understood the concept. You can use whichever data types you like, of course. You just have to make sure that the values which you provide are of the same data type. For instance, I could try jamming a string in here, but then obviously I would get an error because the arguments aren't matching. Now another important point is this. Even though we created the result variable inside of the add method and printed out its value, we won't have access to this variable outside of the add method. If I go to my main method and try to access it, I would get an error saying that result cannot be resolved to a variable. This is because result only exists within this scope. Once we are at the end of the add method, the variables number 1, number 2 and result get destroyed. Because once we are done adding these numbers together, we don't need the variables anymore. So we can get rid of them and free up some memory. Anyway, this is all the time I have for this episode. I hope you found it useful. If you have any questions, feel free to put them in the comments and I'll be glad to help you out. If you want to see more videos like this, be sure to subscribe. See you next time.